Tina. Um, so hi everyone. Um, I'll still be introduced. My name is Tina. Um, Latifa is my best friend. Um, so the reason I'm here today is because I want our story to be heard in order to Latifa get a chance for freedom. So I'll first go on uh, to how I met Latifa. Um, she basically contacted me in uh, 2010. I was living in Dubai at the time. She sent me an email to ask for private classes for capoeira. Uh, it's a Brazilian martial art she wanted to learn. Um, I was first resisting because I was working in Abu Dhabi and, uh, and Latifa was obviously in Dubai. Um, but once I went to meet her and she was genuinely um, interested in learning the martial art, I decided to start giving her last classes. Um, and we're training nearly on a daily basis. Um, but first, when I met Latifa, she came across as extremely shy and uh, reserved. Um, she always used to um, look down when she was talking to people. Um, that's why her capoeira name was uh, Chimida, which uh, means timid or, or shy. Um, Latifa was doing a lot of sports at the same time, so in the morning she would have a different personal trainer as well. And sometimes when we met she would already be tired, so during those times we would just uh, sit and talk and order some food. So I got to know her better, and basically the friendship was growing. Um, Latifa was also very interested in uh, veganism, so um, she would be inviting um, people to do demonstrations on uh, raw cooking. Um, we had several friends um, being brought over as well uh, for those classes. Um, and she was vegan because of her, uh, she was very compassionate uh, towards animals. Um, as you're aware, uh, Latifa was, was in prison from 2002 because of her previous uh, attempt to escape from uh, UAE. And after she was released, um, she basically found comfort in uh, spending time with animals. So she used to go to uh, the Maktoum family stables and uh, spend time with horses because she didn't, she didn't feel like she could trust um, humans at that point of time. Um, in 2012, um, end of 2012, uh, myself and Latifa, we started skydiving. And um, when Latifa starts a new hobby, it's like she does something full time. You know, it becomes like her purpose, something that she engages in um, on a daily basis. Um, she has now completed over 2,000 skydives. And that time, Latifa was changing because um, she made a lot of new friends at the drop zones in Dubai, and she became more comfortable in like social situations. Um, a few things about Latifa's personality. Um, Latifa is probably the kindest person I know. Um, she always goes out of her way to help others, and she doesn't want to take any credit of things that she does for others. Um, she also comes across as very embarrassed of her family's wealth. Um, she's very generous though, very down to earth, and Latifa doesn't use any designer clothes or handbags. And lot, a lot of it is to do with the fact that uh, she's vegan, obviously. Yeah. <clears throat> um, obviously, you know, in, the, in the Gulf, the culture is so that you have maids and drivers, but Latifa would always be defending um, the people who were uh, working, like for example in her residence, and she would always make sure that their, uh, their conditions uh, are taken care of. Um, I find it sad that when Latifa packed up her things to, to leave Dubai, she had very few um, items of sentimental value that she wanted to take with her, like they would fit in a, in a, in a very small bag. Um, and this was, this was to show that she had no attachment to her life in UAE. And also it would show that she was very desperate to, to leave UAE. Um, so over the years, Latifa also did so many things for me. And so when she finally asked me to help her for her escape, 
I, I didn't hesitate. I was willing to risk my life for her because for me, she's, she's like my family. Um, she was the reason I was in, in Dubai for the last seven years. Um, so going to um, more towards um, when we were on the boat. Um, so initially when we were picked up by Airway off the coast of Oman, um, Latifa was very excited and happy about her freedom, but she soon became very anxious because she knew the capabilities of her father. Um, she knew that he would go to, or, to great lengths to, to bring her back, and also because of his relations to the countries nearby. Um, so after eight days at sea, we were attacked by the Indian Special Forces. Um, at the time of the attack, uh, myself and Latifa, we were down in our um, cabin and we had decided to get some sleep regardless of knowing that we had planes and some boats following us. Um, then we started hearing some noises which sounded like gunshots. Um, we got scared and we locked ourselves um, into the bathroom. We're hugging each other and we're like, oh, we, we're so scared. Um, um, and we came uh, we came out and the cabin was filled with smoke, so we couldn't, we couldn't breathe. Um, so the only way was to go up to the deck. And as we were walking up the stairs, um, I saw many um, machine guns pointed at me with um, like laser sights. And, and I, I, I was really scared. Um, I was pushed to the floor and my, my hands were tied. And next to me on the floor, there was a pond of blood. And I was thinking that Hervé or one of the crew members uh, must be dead. I, I was really scared at that point. Um, the most terrifying moment of that um, um, ordeal for me was probably um, being taken outside and pushed towards the railing. Um, my head was pushed towards the water, and I was told that um, I would be shot. I was told to close my eyes and they said, take your last breath, we will shoot your brain out. Um, there was multiple guns pointing at me and I thought, that's it. Um, that would be my yeah, last moment. I was, I was really scared. Um, a short while later, um, I was taken to the front deck where I saw Latifa. She was lying on the floor and her hands were tied behind her back. Um, one of the invaders uh, was threatening to shoot me and Latifa was full of courage and she was uh, defending me. She told them, don't shoot her. Um, she was so brave. Um, the men kept on asking who is Latifa and she was simply repeating, I'm seeking for political asylum, seeking for political asylum, but they were not listening to her. Um, at that time, I was told to uh, keep my eyes shut um, with the threat to be shot if I didn't comply. Um, then I heard someone speaking Arabic and uh, Latifa said that shoot me here, just don't take me back to UAE um, because she obviously realized that these were her father's men. Um, so she was taken uh, away kicking and screaming. Um, at that time I burst into tears uh, because they were taking her away. Um, and I was told not to show any emotion by the um, Indians who attacked us. Um, they said they would shoot me. Um, that was basically the last time I've seen my friend Latifa. Um, so after she was taken, the UAE soldiers um, took over the boat. There was an Emirati person called Ahmed who was apparently in charge of the operation. Um, she, he told me that he wouldn't stop if I wanted to jump into the ocean. It would save them a lot of trouble. Um, in the following morning, um, I could see that our boat was escorted uh, by two Indian Coast Guard ships. And I was told we're headed to UAE. Um, at that point, all our phones and um, other communication devices were obviously confiscated. Um, Around six to seven days at the sea, 
After that, we arrived in UAE, um, where I was handcuffed and blindfolded and taken into something they would call a um, state security facility, um, where the likes of ISIS uh, would be kept. Um, so I was taken through the admission procedures, um, the medical checkup, uh, mug shots. After I had, they asked me to sign a prisoner form and I just <coughs> broke down. I, I thought, oh, I don't see a way out from this situation. Um, straight after that, they started with the interrogation, which went on for hours and hours. Um, I was threatened with the death penalty and in a better scenario, they would be looking at, I would be looking at a life in prison. Um, I was told that I had stabbed the ruler in the back by helping the daughter to leave UAE. Um, the second day of interrogation was more aggressive, very intimidating, and basically they didn't believe anything I said. They didn't believe that um, I didn't help Latifa because she was my friend. They thought I was after some uh, monetary gain. And they also wanted to know which organization was behind this whole plan. Um, they were talking about Latifa, her being a minor, someone who can't decide for herself. Um, they made jokes about her desires about freedom. Um, and in order to be released, um, I was forced to make a false confession and sign documents in Arabic and agree on a non-disclosure agreement. So after two weeks of detention, I was released. Um, <clears throat> I didn't believe it was happening until I was actually sitting in a plane and it took off. Um, I was very happy to be going home. Um, I was thinking um, they must have been looking for me, but at that point of time, I had no idea about everything that was going on in the media. Um, um, during the first week, um, I was receiving threatening phone calls um, from the state security officers. Um, the person had been um, interrogating me, so I recognized his voice. Um, and he basically uh, reminded, that, reminded me that Sheikh Mohammed can get, we, get me anywhere. So I wasn't really safe anywhere if I would talk, if I would give any details about what happened to the press. Um, so during the eight days of freedom that Latifa experienced, she actually wanted to spend a night out on the deck under the stars. And I kept on telling her that, no, we have plenty of time to do so. We might be on this boat for, for 30 days and we could do it another night. Um, I regret not having agreed to do what Latifa wanted as it would have been like a big expression of freedom for her. Um, and it seemed that those eight days were actually the only time that Latifa has ever been free. Um, so after my release, when I first time saw the video that was uh, obviously published and it was made in my apartment, that's where we recorded it, I felt very, very emotional and I started to, to cry in front of my family. Um, I realized then that I need to keep on fighting for her. And the reason really that I'm here today is that I want to verify all the information that is that it's true. And even if it's a very difficult situation for me to be in front of cameras, um, I will do it for her. And I wish everyone would do their best to really help Latifa to be free.